The year is 2001. Dale Earnhardt Sr. had just passed away earlier in the year in the most infamous accident in NASCAR history. While the racing world was still mourning the death of an all-time great, EA Sports, in their prime, released the first NASCAR Thunder game, Thunder 2002. The game opened with a touching memorial to Dale Sr., and delivered the greatest console NASCAR video game at that time. This gave NASCAR fans something to cheer for. In such a dark time, EA released the first of three incredible games that changed the racing landscape forever. NASCAR Thunder 2003 improved upon O2, and Thunder 04 was and still is considered to be one of, if not the greatest NASCAR video game ever made. While the EA NASCAR games were never the most realistic or simulation-like, they were always easy to pick up and play, and of course were a ton of fun. These games introduced many people to NASCAR and racing in general, and offered such rich and deep experiences that recent NASCAR games have failed to recapture. Today I'm joined with Darian Gilliam, aka Black Flags Matter, to talk about the NASCAR Thunder series in retrospect. But first, here's a quick word from today's sponsor, Audible. Audible is a website and app where each month you get one audiobook of your choice, as well as two Audible originals. Audible has a lot more to offer than just audiobooks, however. You will find podcasts, guided wellness programs, theatrical performances, and so much more. Now that we are all trapped in our homes, why not go to audible.com slash softdrinktv or text softdrinktv to 500-500 and get a free audiobook, no strings attached. Listen to it while you're playing video games, laying in bed, cooking, or doing laundry. You can even download titles for offline listening in case your Wi-Fi goes out or you're taking a walk. I've been listening to Racing to the Finish, Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s own book narrated by the man himself about his final year, his decision to retire, and what he's been up to after racing. You can get this book or any other audiobook from Audible's massive library for free, either by visiting audible.com slash softdrinktv or texting softdrink TV to 500, 500 And while you're at it, check out everything else Audible has to offer. It's the perfect time to give Audible a shot. What's going on, guys? It's your boy, Darren Gilliam, aka Black Flags Matter. Really appreciate you guys having me on this video. The EA Sports NASCAR era officially began in 1997 with the release of NASCAR 98, but it didn't hit its peak until the NASCAR Thunder series. NASCAR Thunder 2002 was released on the PlayStation on October 2nd, 2001. The main theme song in that game is Sweet Home Alabama, literally the whole time. It was the first game to feature alternate paint schemes on Cars. What was also kind of different about the game's cover is that the cover featured Jeff Gordon, but on the disc, it was defending champion Bobby Labonte. It was the first NASCAR game released on the Xbox and the second on the PlayStation. At the very beginning, it also has a nice tribute to the late Dale Sr. And finally, it was one of the first games to feature Bush Series drivers, which was really rare at the time. NASCAR Thunder 2003 was a major step up, however. EA Sports decided they needed to up the challenge of racing, especially for the long runs. So in this game, they decided to add pit road mistakes for the very first time, and decided to make strategy a larger part in the game. Career mode had a major overhaul. In the first game, you were able to race for up to 20 seasons and manage your team, but this one took a deeper dive. This time around, you had a lot more sponsorship options. You got to manage your entire pit crew, right down from the tire changers all the way up to the crew chief. And finally, research and development became a much more important factor in the mode. Like I said in the beginning, it was about more options. They gave you a ton of more options to choose from when upgrading your car and pit crew, which meant managing your money was the most important. There's even a NASCAR driver in the field right now, and Jordan Anderson, who currently races in the truck series, who said he used the career modes in the NASCAR Thunder games as a kid to learn how to manage a team. You had a brand new feature in lightning challenges that put you in real life situations that took place in the Winston Cup series from 1999 to the first half of 2002. The way it worked was drivers would tell players what exactly happened to them in the race and then the players would step in their driver's seat trying to give them the chance to reenact or alter history. And the best part, by far the best part to me is the overall presentation in game 
gameplay. Every race started off with a mini pre-race show including real MRN personalities and Joe Moore and the late Barney Hall. These guys have been on some of the most iconic calls in NASCAR history throughout the years. After they say their piece on the track and certain drivers, the national anthem would commence. Well, at least the final few seconds of it. That was followed up by fireworks and then the famous words in motorsports, gentlemen, start your engines. And then some random official would be in the middle of pit road waving the cars by. I don't think that actually happens. And finally, NASCAR Thunder 2004, my all-time favorite game in the series. It's basically a polished version of NASCAR Thunder 2003, but there's a twist. The game introduced a grudge and alliance feature. This is based on a player's driving style and attitude. If the player drives really dirty and bumps into other drivers, even if the bump was unintentional, that driver becomes a rival. And if that same driver you happen to piss off encounters you again, or in that same moment, moment you bump him, he's gonna give it right back. However, if the player drafts with that said opponent, the rival's level in grudge drops significantly. If the player drafts a neutral driver long enough, that driver will officially become an ally. And during certain parts of the race, the player will let you pass. This is especially helpful in game modes such as career mode and season mode if used correctly. If not, you are in for a long ass season. The point is, NASCAR games like this are what helped younger fans like myself at the time get into the sport. It was the most perfect game to me. You had amazing presentation, amazing gameplay. Yes, was the rival system very archaic and unrealistic from time to time, sure, but at least it was there. Outside of NASCAR 2005 Chase for the Cup, no other game comes close. Many gamers don't view EA Sports in a favorable light today, but NASCAR fans will always have a soft spot for them. They made some of the greatest games in the series history during NASCAR's peak. The problem is, in typical EA fashion, they failed to deliver on later releases. The final game, NASCAR 09, didn't even feature licensed manufacturers. Yeah, that's right, a racing game didn't have actual manufacturers. Anyways, the NASCAR Thunder series is always going to hold a special place in NASCAR fans' hearts, and hopefully someday we can return to that level of gameplay and in-game presentation. Black Flags Matter is a fantastic YouTuber that anyone who watches or has watched NASCAR should be subscribed to. In the description you'll find a link to his channel and Twitter. And he's 100% right. The NASCAR Thunder series was so innovative and polished for its time that the games still hold up today, especially Thunder 04. NASCAR 05 Chase for the Cup was another great release the year after that I've made a video on. But most people would agree that the EA NASCAR games took a drastic turn in quality shortly after that game. Electronic Arts went from releasing some of the best arcade racing games ever, to releasing some of the worst. They stopped caring about the NASCAR license, and turned their attention towards their other brands. NASCAR 09 was the last NASCAR game released by EA besides the 2009 release of NASCAR Kart Racing, which wasn't exactly what people wanted at the time. EA announced that there would be no NASCAR 10, as the series was dropping in sales and the NASCAR license was now out of their hands. Gran Turismo 5 included NASCAR in their game in 2010, and the experience was actually awesome, but it was meant to be a simulation and not as easy for a newcomer or casual fan to pick up and play. There was a hole left by EA in the market. Eutechnics took over the mainline NASCAR games, and while they weren't meant to be sim games, they were so unrealistic and filled with so many bugs that the games faced mass criticism from players and critics alike. 704 Games took over in 2015 and brought the NASCAR Heat branding back, which many NASCAR fans likely remember from the early 2000s. While the Heat series has been much better than the Eutechnic series, it still isn't living up to its full potential, leaving NASCAR and racing fans to daydream about a new EA NASCAR game. Unfortunately, as good as the NASCAR Thunder games were, EA is no longer the same company it once was. In the early to mid 2000s, every EA sports game was great. Madden, FIFA, NBA Live, NHL, and of course NASCAR. Today, all of those games are money hungry, glitchy, and oftentimes straight up embarrassing. EA is not the savior most NASCAR fans might assume they would be. The best bet for casual NASCAR gaming is for NASCAR Heat to continue developing and build upon its base, 
or for another company to make competing NASCAR games to help push 704 games. I would say that NASCAR Heat is in a better spot than any EA game currently is, as Heat 4 is actually one of my top sports games of the year. But I, too, itch for a return to the form we saw with the NASCAR Thunder series. While there will always be NASCAR Racing 2003, or iRacing, the NASCAR Thunder games fit a niche that those games never will. The ability to pick up and play the old NASCAR games to go through a 20 year career and become a NASCAR driver themselves brought a lot of new fans to the sport. If it wasn't for those early to mid 2000s EA NASCAR games, I probably never would have become a NASCAR fan. I believe the Eutechnics NASCAR games really hurt sports popularity and growth, as a good video game can draw so many young fans to a sport. NASCAR Thunder 04 was the pinnacle of NASCAR video games, and between the awesome lightning challenges, the in-depth career mode, and the fun, polished racing, it still holds up today. In fact, through software such as the PCSX2 and Dolphin emulators, you could play the Thunder games in 4K. The in-game models are actually rendered in any resolution you want, and it doesn't take that powerful of a PC to emulate these games anymore. With the netplay feature built into these emulators, you can even play these games online against other people today. So if you crave recapturing the nostalgia found in these great games, playing them on your PC through an emulator is a fantastic way to rediscover the magic. Enjoy them, because there will never be another series like the NASCAR Thunder series. Thanks for watching. Rebel soul child got a fist ball, I'm a respawn of ancestors, and I'm blessed, huh? They are not him, tell him fess up, I get checked stub, hella carefree, nothing scares me, hella reckless, yeah. I got next up, right? No, we not the